Let's go. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of the Hit Confirm, episode 27. I am your host, half of your host, the Hit, joined by the actual Confirm here, Coach. Just kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm Casey, joined by a good friend, Coach. Yeah, that sounds like you dropped that Confirm, man. Then oh, you just, no, you just got punished, man. You got to pay dropped, You're the one that's confirming it, man. Nah, I was the second hit. <laughs> they were blocking, and you kept going. <laughs> Oh man, no. But like, what's going on, man? How's 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 your day's been going? Uh, days have been going all right. Uh, pace is picking up at work. Uh, been been more into fighting game stuff more lately than I ever have been in the last few months, which is ironic because we do this show. But you know, I'm finally engaging in more games, especially uh, Strive. But I play a good amount of um, Samurai Showdown Five Special with the DMV crew. That's a uh, Delaware, uh, uh, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia. Or some oh, people dang. say DC, but though, yeah, those guys play pretty active, and so they are nice enough to include me. So I've been playing a lot with them, learning and leveling up, while also playing and drive. I haven't been playing that, playing that with people that much, but I've mostly right. been training, you know, watching the Faust Discord and helping people solve <laughs> questions. And I got a project or two down the road. Whoa. If I, if if, if I'm not lazy, <laughs> if I'm not lazy, if I'm not lazy. Like I got, I got an actual script up for uh, one of them. Oh, but uh, oh, I'm super interested. I'm already, <laughs> all right. Just, just let you know, I'm already like the first fan. Anybody else that comes by that's saying like they're the fan already, just they're not a real fan. I'm the first fan of this, so I want to <laughs> know firsthand or see firsthand how's it goes. <laughs> you know, you, you say that, man. You say that it's gonna be posted on YouTube, right? So mm -hmm. let me ask, let me ask you the million dollar question. Are you okay, subscribed to my YouTube? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the, the new episode of the Hiccup I'm so happy you're here, guys. <laughs> that, who, oh, for our man. followers that join and listen, I mean, you got our loyal followers. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and to answer that question, I think I'm subscribed to you. I think I am. I don't know. I got to check. Hey, man, if you do it now, nobody you, will know. But uh, <laughs> what's YouTube the algorithm is weird, man. I, I've been subscribed to people for years, and I don't get there like, you know, there are notifications, the bell on or whatever. It's it's crazy. But uh, you know, bes besides you being the second fan of this video, if you don't <laughs> if you don't subscribe, what's been up with you, man? Uh, nothing much. I've uh, been working a little bit more, uh, more hours at work. Uh, just focusing on that and about to actually see myself in a good uh, position in the future. Um, making a lot of money. I just say that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and traveling a lot more. So you you guys will see me. Probably not in terms of like, you know, fighting games, uh, I will travel, but not in a lot in terms of that, more so just like, you know, just different parts of the world, and et cetera. But yeah, man, just working a lot more, putting in a lot of hard work. Um, oh, that's what's up, man. Yeah. And, and also, uh, before I go get into me with Strive and crying about Eno and all that, oh, uh, boy. you mentioned how you were in the Faust Discord, uh, and that surprised me because I was like, wait, he's in the, he's in the Discord giving like, you know, having a real conversations, man. Thought you were like in the background watching these people <laughs> like Batman. So this, this, this Discord has been around since x right? That's what, that's what it was created for. And then uh, when Strive came out, a bunch of people just flooded in. I guess they searched for the Faust Discord or found it, whatever. And they mm -hmm. saw, they all started coming into, we made a Strive channel, right? And they all started just talking in there, and then they all started, like, getting more and more active. And then they realized that people weren't touching any of the XR stuff except for, like, one or two people. So we made a whole list of channels. Even though there's, like, a, a Jilted Gear Strive Discord hub where they, like, you know, consolidate information, have character channels and roles and stuff like that. I guess some people still like the good old-fashioned character Discord. And I, I at first, was not going to really participate in it. I was just kind of going to, you know, now that XR kind of ran its course, you know, if someone talked to one of those channels, I would say something. But more and more people came in there. And what I was noticing 
is that most of them are one, you know, people who are like, you know, lifelong Street Fighter, Tekken, or whatever players. And there's also right. a good amount of people who have came from Smash. But there's also a decent amount of people who just never, ever touched a fighting game in any capacity, whether it be, you know, some variation of Smash or anything like that. Never. Or if they did, it'd be like, you know, the casual thing, right? Like, this is the first time they've taken it seriously or played one. So there's a lot of younger people in there as well. So it's like, they started asking these questions, you know, like. The basics. Yeah, the basics. But, you know, when you look at someone ask questions from never having played these games, you you have to really rethink about how you talk about this stuff. Because most of the stuff you use for, you know, like if somebody came from Street Fighter or Blaze Blue or something like that, right, you can use a lot of general terminology they would understand and you can help them jump in faster. Even if the stuff does not play out the same in their games, the concepts right. tend to kind of overlap. And so you can get them to speed. And if you say frame trap to them, they, they know what it means. And if you say, you know, okie to them, they know what it means. But to the person who just like randomly showed up because they liked the game, they thought it looked cool. And then they saw this tall doctor looking monster dude. They're like, I want to play him. And then they come into Discord and then someone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just knock him down and do this uh, left, right, okie. Oh. It's a, you know, in the command grab, it's a 2S5H. And they're like, you might, they might as well be reading off the Rosetta Stone or something, right? They, they, don't, know, they don't know what that means. And so that's that's one thing that's been really getting in my, getting my brain juices flowing and how to present information. But I actually, I love people that are new to the community. And like, I think I've mentioned this before, like, but it really hit me when that time I, I was living in California and I visit the Oakland uh, or arena for mm-hmm. um, eSports arena. And I talked to one guy and his first major was Evo. And ever since I just been keeping an eye on like new players and noticing in stream chats, like I see more so of like, you know, Hey, I'm new, not to this game, but just like this genre. Mm-hmm. Like, can anybody help out and stuff like that? And I make sure I respond to those people and everything. But yeah, I love those type of uh, players. I think I find it easier for me, in my opinion, to teach them because they don't have that foundation already built. So they're not like kind of biased, biased on a lot of things or they don't already have like <laughs> yeah. natural, natural <laughs> bad habits to break that you have to like break that and have like like the small arg- arguments with them or whatever. Mm-hmm. To get I know through. No, no. Yeah. So like with the newer players, they have that clean slate. So you can kind of approach it from like not outside of a gaming thing at that point. You could kind of like, you know, approach it for what something they've done in the past and always relate to that. And then that's, you know, you, then that's how you ease them through and walk to it. And then they're like, oh, OK, I get it. And then you start they start coming to you with things they learn. And it's like, all right, I don't even have to teach you no more. You're getting it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like if you if you can carry that that mindset to each game, you'll do much better. Cause like they like you said they don't have the prejudices so be like when you say like if you want to beat a throw you do this and they're not gonna but like, throws are not supposed to work that way you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh no I'm guilty of it myself man it's like well throws are not supposed to work that way you're right so yeah just having that that clean open mind is just you know it's it's a beautiful thing and then the second they start you, you see them starting to get upset because they're used to something or that bias starts kicking in you're like. You start shaking your head, but then you start, you're like, <laughs> all right, they're one of us now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one thing that it took me a moment to, to kind, of, kind of shake off. Because, like, you know, like, I came from Street Fighter games, so, like, my initial thoughts on stuff like, you know, DP should be invincible, and this should be like this, and this should be like that, you know. And then when I, when I played a bunch of other 2D games, especially, like, a bunch of random old data east snk games and they're like okay the rules are completely different you know these, these dps are invincible only after fame five or you can throw these dps or you can strike these dps like you see that concept more and more these days but like oh you have a game like mark of the wolves right where dps don't have any invincibility at all they're just there for the top cancels right and <laughs> like stuff like that will throw you for a loop if you have that huge bias because it's like this is not how they work like you don't any air like that you have to do other things but yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can step away from those biases or at least reduce them, it helps a lot. But uh, it's it's human nature, though. Yeah, it is definitely human nature, and it's been hard for me to like you know walk, take that uh, because usually I'm good at it, right? When um, Marvel came out, I I did play a little. I actually got into competitive because of Marvel too. But like I, when Marvel three came out, I was trying to my hardest to uh 
to, uh, you know, just to understand that game and then like Street Fighter at a, at a high level and all those, each new games, like when I played the anime game, I think the first anime game I really touched, um, it was kind of Melty Blood, but then what was it? It was, I want to say it was, yeah, it was Blaze Blue and like actually having on the sticks. I could say I played Guilty Gear in the past casually, but like on the sticks, actually trying to comprehend things. And I, I remember just playing, uh, getting discouraged playing strong players, and I like jog Blaze Blue so quick. <laughs> <laughs> I think I ran into, I, I still, I still never forget. I ran to like I think the uh, level I mean, highest rank like Hazama, and he just destroyed me. And I was like, this, this is, does not feel fun, and I don't understand what's going on. And at that time, I didn't know too much people in the community, so I was like, I'm not gonna stress it. Move on. <laughs> But yeah, like, but usually I'm, I've gotten better at like, you know, accepting games, but now it's like your mind, I've, man. <laughs> I've been going through a stride. <laughs> All right. So, 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 try. so, so, so we had our show with Kenzo, right? Where, the, where we were talking in the pre-release and we only had the beta to that point. And so right. we had, we had our impressions and stuff of the game. So let's start from there, man. So you were pretty, you're pretty at, enthusiastic you said stuff like you know if you if you play a character you should try another one to, to avoid biases and stuff like that what what is your stance now how, how do you look at things now uh if i ripped myself off into a different person and he came out and was like yo uh yes this is you need to figure out what all you said uh, uh, in the past in the last episode because all that you said you didn't heed your own words <laughs> It's like I'm a different person right now. Like, I ended up falling for the mistake of playing Eno, a character I've been playing for years in other gear gear games. And though she is helping me learn gear strive, I would say, um, it's not a good idea to like. I still I still promote that, which is don't play the character you've played in the past if you've played gear before. Um. And I still think that stands true today. And I, by the end of this episode, I have good news for you. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just like, and I wasn't also expecting the usually balances. I I can accept them mm -hmm. because um, I end up playing like a pretty mid to high tier character by accident. It's not like I I'm like, hey, this character's cheap. I pick him up. It's usually like. Aesthetically, I picked the character, and I think they have cool combos. But this time, um, I started off with like a, I felt like a low tier character, and um, it's it's it's, it's having a, it's just been weighing on me because you know I'm so used to um the biggest thing for me personally is movement. So coming in a strive, I knew the movement was going to be like you know after trying to beta, so I was like you know movement is going to be hard in this game. So the first beta I played pot. I was like, all right, cool. I might be a pot main. And the second beta came out, and Eno wasn't announced yet. Uh, Zotto was out. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll be a Zotto main because, you know, he's kind of, uh, he, he's technical. I like technical characters, you know. He, and he felt, he felt like Guilty Gear. And uh, I ran into Axel, and I was like, this does not feel fun because I can't move. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. What next, So man? I was like, yep. So then I was like, not in a crisis but i was like you know what i'll just play whatever character i might, I might play chip whatever I, 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 or nagoro yuki at the time i was actually thinking about playing nagoro yuki so then um once they announced you know i was like i guess i'll play her and then not because she stuck to her, like her roots in terms of like offensive play styles i wanted to play her because i felt like um i just wanted to see how it would translate for me and how I would like, you know, try to, I tried to persevere. I'm not going to lie. And me having so much um, experience with past gear games, it's like a fixed bias already. That's like hard to break. And I think Kazunoko kind of like um, puts this in perspective in a great context. And when he was talking about in his interview, when he was saying like, it's hard to be objective about strive when he has so much you know past experiences with other gear games mm -hmm. so me going in with Eno kind of made it worse that was not a good idea it's still not a good idea <laughs> and um 
Yeah, and there's other players that's been playing, uh, you know, for years just like me too. But I kind of see them like going back and forth and <laughs> making kind of funny jokes and stuff. So, yeah, it's 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 um the honeymoon phase of of Strive is very weird because like like I said, I've I ended up trying to play the character I've played for years when I should just be playing one a character that's very good at movement and things that I like, which is like buttons and stuff like that. So. I'll give the character that I'm going to actually officially switch to by the end of this uh, uh, podcast. But yeah, right now, uh, I just, I'm struggling to have fun with the game because I'm playing Eno. But when I play any other character, I just I accept or strive easier. So That makes sense. And I've definitely seen uh, kind of a mixed bag. Like I've seen some of what you're saying. I've seen people who are like, you know, this is still still like something worth exploring like you know i think um i can't i can't think of like names but i've seen people who are like kind of dedicated you know like yeah, yeah i'm still good with this but i've also seen like your reaction too and i've seen that like kind of across the board for characters where some people are still pretty much on board and they just they're just there to stick with it like you know kenzo we, we had on the show he's like that for every guilty gear game right yeah like like no matter what chip's going through he's like i'm here for it and you know, if he changes for the better, for the worse, you know, that's that's my dude. And, you know, that's how he looks at the game. Though know, he says he's messed with other characters, but that's generally how he is based on what he said and uh, what I know of him. But, uh, yeah, like, I definitely can't blame somebody who has, like, a huge attachment, you know, years of learning, uh, muscle memory, looking at a character and be like, this, this isn't what I signed up for once they change it to a degree or change the system to a degree. Uh, right, and, and honestly... I, with that, like, you know, about, like, if kind of just specifically with Eno, I, in terms of, like, just to get this out the way, I actually don't want her to be buffed because I understand what this game is. I understand what the, the dice gaze vision. <laughs> <laughs> I understand what they're trying to do, which is, you know, get a collective of people that are new to the series and just, like, you know, have them ease in and just have fun with the game. And I've seen the opposite end of it right where it's like uh i think i saw somebody in a chat where there was like they uh just almost broke their controller because Eno just kept like dancing on them and they didn't know what to do so then like i i always keep that back in the back of my mind like i'm not a person who's super biased to the point where it's like i just want my character to be buff and that's it yeah. i can play this game how i want no i understand the other side of it where people are trying to learn and the character can you know devs could end up doing one simple change where it is causes hell not just for like you know uh people who could play the game at a high level but just it just makes it even worse for people who you know who are still trying to learn the game in general like like how we were saying earlier new people to like fighting games in general so yeah and it's it also like applies to people just new to the series even if they're long time fighting game players because it's still a, kind of a blank slate for them as well in some yep. in some regards right uh, so it's like, like you, you know, example, you're like, you know, maybe this movement doesn't feel as fluid or snappy as it used to, but to a lot of people who are blocking it in Strive, it's, it, it's really, it's, it's pretty terrible to deal with for them, right? It still feels overwhelming and hard to react to because there's people in the files Discord that come up, how do I stop this character? She just does overheads and she's quick and I can't challenge her, you know? In reality, you, you can and there's... And the game made it more streamlined too, you know, for better or for worse, whatever your opinion on that lies. But yeah, even then, you still got the people who will still suffer the same way they did in the other games. It's just a matter of uh, how easy th the answer is to access now. But right. I would say my journey, as I'm, I'm a long time Exert Faust player, I didn't, I didn't play him in Plus R. Um, but I played him, and I finally kind of understood him. And he's he's kind of a weird character who can just kind of, like, be strong in a lot of areas. And so his design has a lot of strengths and not too many crystal clear weaknesses. Uh, so he's just a character who's just kind of always going to be strong in most games he's in, just because of how he was. But so now they took, you know, away the parts of him that he can cover every portion of the game, right? That's how he is in Strive. That's I think that's the kind of design they were going for. And like we're gonna specialize him into one or two areas. And so a lot of people are really frustrated with the character. And you know, he's like, you know, this character's bad now. He can't do this or that. And when you compare him to before, it's really bad, right? <laughs> but when you look yeah. at him in the context of Strive, you can still see some problems there. 
Um, so I'm not going to, like, you know, hand wave them away because uh, I've noticed them. Like, I've been playing that hard, but I've noticed them. And, yeah, but, like, I guess I had the opposite experience of you, right? Like, I was, like, I was, before I played them, I was, like, man, when I look at this character, I have, I'm going to have all these biases. I'm going to be mad at this and that. And and when I got in training mode, I was looking at this, like, damn, I can get punished for this. I can get punished for that. Lame, lame. And then I, I'm, like, you know what? I'm going to go just play in a tower. Like, I, I hadn't, I never played, when I played the beta, I never played another human being. So, when the actual game came out, it was the first time I actually played another human being. So, I got in a tower, you know, did the CPU match. <laughs> and, then I, and then I started playing, and then I played my first opponent, which was a Giovanna. And they started, you know, moving and zipping around the screen and whatever. And I was just sitting there like, you know, I didn't, I, didn't, I don't know any of these characters' combos since I didn't really look at it that hard. I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to press buttons. I'm going to poke. I'm going to do air to airs and stuff like that. And I and I beat the guy 3-0 or whatever the ranked number of matches is, right, in the tower. Right. And the game just moves me up. I'm like, you know, I don't like the way a lot of this character works, but I'm going to take a different approach. I'm just going to look at him as if it was like a completely different character, even if it has the same name and a similar moveset. So I guess in that way, I didn't think about that anymore. So I started like analy analyzing him on his merits in the game, and he still has some strong uh, tactics and stuff like that, and he has some more obvious weaknesses. And I still think he's still relatively weak to the rest of the cast. Like you know, there's other characters who kind of in his zone. Anji, you know, some people will say you know, some people won't. I think I think Faust and Anji are the characters that most people are not disputing on. But, like, right. some pe people are disputing on, like, Eno and stuff like that. Some people say she's good. Some people say she's not. And hey, man, once couple... Justin Wong said Eno is trash, I was like, y'all, <laughs> he knows. Yeah, but that's just one of the characters that's in contention, right? People will tell you one way or the other. But most pe yep. most people are not going to, like, try to convince you, like, Anji is, like, right, amazing. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Somebody, someone will try that with Millie. Some people say Millie is not that great, and some people say she's like one of the best. And so, like, that's where the game is. Like, a lot of the the lower cast and the higher cast are kind of set more or less, but the middle is kind of fluctuating, which is what you kind of expect for a new game, where people are understanding the tools, understanding the weaknesses, and as they lab, those characters are gonna go up and down. Like, Potemkin's gonna look weak sometimes. Sometimes he's gonna look really strong. So that's that's kind of what you expect of a game. So. Yeah, right now, I'm still messing with Faust, and I think the main thing that inspires me is just, like, the other people in the Faust Discord. They're like, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? And then that's what makes me turn the game on and look at stuff. So that's mainly how I've been learning the character, because somebody goes, I'm so sick of Ramblethal doing this. I'm like, oh, boy. I'll turn the game on, and I'll mess with it, and then I'll answer a question. So that's what actually showing others is what's been teaching me. Is that that's uh that's always been kind of like a tried and true principle. Like when you teach somebody else, you yep. learn inadvertently, and so that's what's been teaching me Faust. <laughs> so, so I've been uh getting into that. But uh, I've been working on my Giovanna, so that's probably who I would play if I was in bracket. But you know, I'm not taking the game that seriously, so I'm not thinking too much about the character strengths. I'm just just playing just to play. So that's where I am at the game with the game. That's good. That's like I'm. I wish I could have that mindset in terms of like, I guess, going into it. But again, like I said, I had that bias of, of all those years. But I am kind of like on that path of like, the reason why I haven't officially dropped Eno or I uh, I haven't like really, uh, I, I would say I haven't like, I, I, I still play her on the side because that group of people where they're like, oh, I don't understand what she's doing or I see like false uh, information getting put out where it's like, oh, she's she's actually like negative on stroke to victory. And it's like, wait, 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 no, no, she's she's plus there. You don't want to press a button there at least. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She might not get much, but she's at least plus there. And it's like, um, that that is what keeps me going. Like, and also other Eno players are like, you know, staying attached to her. Um, I like talking to, to those to those players because you know they're they're in it to like you know not to win it but to learn and get better in. That's my thing with like just fighting games in general. It's like if you're in it to like learn to get better, then I'm. It's hard for me to just like drop out, drop off, and leave. So that's why I still play her, um, just for the knowledge check to give people, because um, a lot of people also fear that character once she, you know, she gets in her zone, and and, and it's understandable. It's uh, you fear what you unknown, you know. No, definitely, know. definitely. It, it's it's she could it's one thing we all one thing we do know is the high low game right but like 
you don't know how is it's going how it's going to turn out in the end so like that's why i still play her on the side and try to help people out and with matchups and stuff and there's players like you know sonic soul that's been putting his like damn his hardest work to try to like you know stay with that character and play with her and he's been getting better and he's been learning and teaching people himself and um you have you know of course strong play you know other you know players like diaphone um havoc noah um of course the great daru (laughs) (laughs) um it's, it's very cool to see and like you know it's just 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 they're trying to help out not just like let people know hey yo this character i can do is strong with this but they're most for the most part all the Eno players are just trying to tell you look this is what you can do here punish this do this all they because i think what they're trying to do is they're trying to find that that hump over that plateau where they go, get over that plateau of like okay now i'm consistently fighting players that are good at fighting her then i can take it to the next level and i think that's what they're uh they're trying to get to and i think that's the best way to do it because that's exactly exactly how like uh the low tiers and uh or not just low tiers but like j- whenever i used to just like i would study Jap- japanese players I, I always was wondering like how are the low tiers so good like the low tier players mm-hmm. they were like just as good as like our like higher tier players with our top tier characters over here in america and i was like why why are they so good you look at them in videos arcade back in the day and you're like man they're destroying people and and you, is this character top tier you like learn a new fighter and like, <laughs> you ask is this character top tier people are like no bottom three <laughs> and it's because they have like that good experience like you know people know how to fight their character so they're always they're, i guess the best way to say is like they're always like on the edge on like they're never comfortable you know they're never fully comfortable which you know helps their game out and that's why the Eno players still stick with her and that's why i still like roll Eno because I, I like to help people out um but competitively um i'm not gonna play her <laughs> um she i don't find i personally don't find the game fun play, uh me playing with me playing her mm-hmm. so but i i'm so i'm gonna play a different character competitively that i find very fun that i think it's not i guess I wouldn't say underrated, but I would say the game is new, so I understand it. But I, I think I understand this character pretty well, so I'm just gonna stick to them once I start putting in work with them. But yeah, strive this this honeymoon phase. Outside of just the character development, like and the balancing, you're seeing it all over, you know, through Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that a lot of stuff you see is pretty typical, especially like after the, you know, the FTC really, really like, you know, dug down into stuff like Twitter. Um, so speaking of, you know, um, information, because uh, like, like you mentioned it during your talk, you mentioned uh, false information. I figured I'd make that the next kind of topic because that's something I've been seeing a lot. And it's, it's, sign of, it, it's kind of... Um, Again, like something you see in any new game, but a lot of stuff I've been seeing is it's been really funny, and the way it just kind of comes across now because like now we're in the point where people like they want their, you know, social media engagement for whatever reason, and so you're right. starting to see stuff like, you know, you know here's here's Soul doing a a full wrist combo on Chip, which, <laughs> and people be like, oh man, this character's out of control, like. You know, you could argue that Soul's a big soul point on the cast, right? But you right. got you gotta be you gotta be genuine about it. But the problem is like when you want like the retweets, it doesn't really matter how accurate it is. And a big example I wanted to bring up, and I'm sorry for this person, and I'm not gonna name them or anything, and I think the tweet is gone, but the infinite RAM block stream. <laughs> so a big tweet went around. I'm, did you see it? Yeah, I saw it one time and then I just was like, Well, this character this her block string feels like infinite, but um, I don't know how this works. But yeah, I just said uh, this is kind of dumb and scrolled on. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I did too. But it stuck in my mind because like the person probably really thought this was like super powerful, right? Because you got two types of people who I feel will do this. Somebody who like legit feels concerned and thinks that this is like needs to be addressed. And then the person who just wants the immediate engagement from it. And sometimes you got people who are kind of a mix of both, right? Right. But, uh, you know, I looked at it, but then I started seeing the main thing that made it stick out to me is that I started seeing it in discords and people were like, oh, crap, this character's out of control. I can't believe Arxis released this character in this state, you know, infinite block strings. And then I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, like, just thinking to myself, like, did you turn the game on 
and run these strings and really see if this was real. And that's the thing that doesn't really happen with. And that's why this the so-called Twitter tech is allowed to go out of control because the most, the average person is not going to turn the game on and say, like, what is with this? Like, they see a cool combo or something, they're not going to turn the game on and be like, is this real? You know, like, you know, if you see some, like, Potemkin Oki where he, like, RCs over your head or something and does a left-right, you're not, most people are not going to turn the game on and see if it's real or not because they just accept, they accept a lot of it at face value. So a lot of people accept that this Ramlethal infinite block string at face value, right? And the person put a Twitter video out there, which was connected to a YouTube video, which is about, I think, about 20 minutes. I think somewhere in there, you know, they start to mention the weaknesses of it at the end, right? And it wasn't really an infinite block string. <laughs> <laughs> but, they, this, but the tweet didn't really indicate any of that. And then somebody oh, was like, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. And somebody quote retweeted it and was like, FD, FD, jump out. And I was like, yeah, that's that sounds about right. And I think eventually that person deleted the tweet. But that's the kind of thing you've just been seeing a lot. Or somebody will quote re, uh, quote an image of the wiki and be like, I can't believe somebody said this. Instead of just like logging in and like erasing it and changing it to correct information because they want the they want the clout. Because like there was one, like the, the big one was like Giovanna's uh, 2D, which is hugely disjoint, right? And someone in the Discord is like, yeah, there's there's no disjoint on this. But they probably put that back in, the, in there in the beta when there was no PC version where you could look at the hitboxes, right? But instead of correcting it, you know, you take an image of it and be like, oh, here you go. And then so there's a lot of sensationalism yep, in these games. Yep. And so like, and like the other thing is like a character like May is being hugely memed, but then you see the image, you see the the Twitter videos of somebody like, yo, here's what you do against Dolphin, here's what you do against Dolphin strings, here's what you do against this X, Y, and Z. But those will get like you know five retweets and stuff, and so the information balance is really disturbed for this game. So like I'm seeing that a lot in the Faust Discord. Like, what do I do about this? You know, this character, this this is a bad matchup. You can't do anything. And then I'm like, you can punish this on block. Oh, really? <laughs> and it's like, you know, you were so you were so convinced that this was terrible, but you didn't know the move that was holding you hostage was negative fifteen. And you see a lot of stuff like that. So I guess my advice, instead of you know, I'm just ranting about it, but my advice is like, you see something on Twitter, turn the game on in training mode, because one, you might find out that it's real, and then you'll learn something new about the character. And then you can uh, use that to learn what your character can do about it. Or if your character does it, then you can add it to your game. Or if you can find out it's not real. But you'll still learn something about the new character. And if you see somebody trying to run that on you, you could just slap it out slap it out of their hand, right? So be, I won't say cynical, but be, doubt what you see and test yourself as much as you can. Because uh, a lot of people want to, want to like, Put their own narrative in the game by changing the context of which something is shown like you know changing the risk gauge on soul and having him do a counter hit and like not that soul does not build risk really fast <clears throat> but yeah be be aware so like when you see those twitter videos look at like what's the risk gauge at what, what's actually happening here is this real because sometimes it is very real and you learning about it is what's helpful to you you know you see an option select try it out you know, try it out in training mode, try it out in a match. Oh, like, this is kind of sick. Oh, oh, no, this isn't real. This this loses to a whole bunch of crap. I don't want to do this. But always um, focus on um, looking at what's real and what isn't for yourself. Don't don't take this stuff at face value or you'll have a warped view of the game. So, like, even if your character has, like, really strong counters versus May. But you're, you're, you're stuck in the, you know, the rhetoric. You're not going to be able to fight that character, even though you might have a really good match of options, you know? Yeah, I agree. And honestly, the only time I've seen where I've gotten, like, scared looking at a Twitter video because of something, like, was, like, played out right or was practical was actually seeing, and I think I, I get this mostly from Street Fighter, um, you would see uh, them doing something in a match first. You'll see probably see that uh, either in the training mode, them, it's like a two-part video. They're doing it in a training mode and then they implement it in a match and you see it happening in different characters against different players in a match and you're like oh wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> that's when everything changes and it's like because at first you're like what's going on when they show it in training mode and then you see it happen in a match and it, everything just speaks out to you so that's the only time i get like very concerned but other than that a lot of people 
post uh, training mode uh, concepts and uh, theories and stuff like that. And honestly, if you're having, if you to not to like, like you said, go into training mode and figure stuff out. But also, the best way if you're having a hard time to just kind of like pinpoint on what you want to focus on in situations like that, what I do is I will look, see that video, see what characters are involved. And I will watch a match video, not me involved, but a match video, tons and tons of them. And just to see scenarios where it's possible where it can happen. And then I'll also go and train them on myself and try out the situation. And then I come to the conclusion that I'm like, okay, this is not all that practical or it is practical. So that's how I come to that. You got to take in, it's not just black and white, basically. It's kind of like what you were saying. It's like, you can't just take it at face value. You got to actually go and, you know, figure it out. For sure, for sure. Cause, cause when you go, like when you watch a tournament, right? Um, say for instance, I'll just like use like uh, I'll just use Chip for example, I guess, or you know, I'll use you know, since I play her more. Um, stroke the big tree. You a lot of times you'll see you know players, if they get a hit, they might stroke the big tree again, or even do it on block and it's uh slash stroke the big tree. Um, some people are so focused on punishing stroke the big tree with a throw you can punish both slash and hard slash they're so focused on doing it because they've heard it, that punish over and over again they've heard it but and they've probably seen it too but quite often the best way to do with that strap slash stroke stroke the big tree is to just block it because she's negative <laughs> like there's two ways to punish it block it because she's negative or throw it but the hardest way is to throw it so what you want to do is block it and take your turn and um it's little things like that where it's like, all right, you see that happening in tournament. It's like it's them spamming that move, doing it over and over again. Is is that real? And you just go to training mode and you just do it yourself. And it's like, and and rule number one, do not do it like once or twice, and and, it, and you mess up the punish, and you're like, all right, this, it's it's not working. <laughs> oh man, I've Don't, seen that too much. <laughs> do not go off that, please, please test it have like a five five or ten count and try to get it in a row like that and you'll you'll figure out real quick that uh th that it, it's not the character's problem that are getting involved it's pr probably pretty much sorry to hate to say this but it's you <laughs> you're just timing <laughs> it wrong you know whether it's the punish or whatever so yeah don't take everything just at face value or black and white it's a lot more nuanced than that for sure for sure and like you can always do what what, what they call in the the, the info tech world of sanity check and you're like look uh i tried to punish this can you do it and then you're like yeah yeah, yeah i can okay okay yeah sometimes, sometimes that that's oh. what you need to do <laughs> that's hard for people though man because that you know what happens when you do that that means you got to put your ego away <laughs> oh man that that e-word shout out to <laughs> tricky but yeah sometimes sometimes you do because there have been times where i've seen people lose tournament matches with specific scenarios and somebody's like, you can punish that. And, uh, and this is not even, I'm not even going to say this is at, right after they lost because, you know, they're not high in emotion. Yeah, this yeah, is probably yeah. when they're eating. We're all out to lunch. We're feeling good. And they just be like, you know, I would just want to suggest, just let you know, you can punish that. And then they were, they were call back in the match. And they're like, no, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. I've tried it. And then you go to training mode and you show them. And then they you, they sit down with you and they actually see. And they're like, oh, okay. That's what it takes. Yeah. Honestly, it doesn't even have to get that far. All this has to get to is, like you said, you just listen to what he try to at least heed to what somebody tells you. You know, they might be wrong, but just go and double check. I've done that plenty of times <laughs> where I double check. <laughs> like, wait, does this move have like frame data like that mm -hmm. in this situation? It's like, no, 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 no. This. That it doesn't work like that, <laughs> <laughs> man. Being being objective about yourself is such a powerful tool. Cause there's there's been definitely times, and in fact, it happened today where I told somebody like, "You can do this with Faust," and then I went and trained him. I'm like, maybe, and they said because they disagreed, and I'm like, I went and trained him mode, and I did it over and over again. And at first, I got a result that matched mine, and I'm like, yeah, I think you can. And they were like, oh, okay, and they, and they started agreeing with me, right? And then I checked it again, and then I was like, "Oh wait, no, you can't." And it, it took my, it it was it was kind of hurtful, right? Because I had to just admit I was wrong after I doubled down. <laughs> but that's what you got to do, you know? Because I learned something new, they learned something, and then someone else came in and uh, you know, reiterated, reiterated what the real right choice was. So sometimes you gotta admit that you know you don't you're not right about a specific subject, or you gotta check yourself. So 
that's yeah, man. That's something. It's little things that, that that can make you probably turn you into a, like a great player overnight. So like you know, just check your egos and you know, move on with it. We can all get better. <laughs> oh man, like so far, um, I haven't been watching a ton of tourney footage. I've been watching a lot of <laughs> RF, but and that's just a, like even when I don't play plus R, I liked watching him stream plus R because he would just like play all the characters and he would just <laughs> dominate against everybody except the uh, Kesuke Testament. That's like the only oh. character that would beat him. <laughs> he would beat like the Vikings, the Zappas. He would just, he just runs over anybody except for the Kesuke Testament. It was, uh, it was just really amusing to watch somebody who just like has all those years and encountering and he's playing um, Faust and um, Strive now and he's doing pretty well. You know, like he'll run into to the Axel and <laughs> he'll struggle but for the most part, you know, he's he's squeezing out every bit of value that the character has because he he has that kind of mindset where it's like you know even if i gotta earn a penny you know it's better than earning nothing and then when you play a character that's weak relative to the rest of the cast that's the kind of mindset you gotta have and you gotta learn like you're winning like situations right yeah like yeah you're not getting right. punishments you're like you're winning the right to have a better option spread I'm so glad you mentioned that because I don't know if you saw the Daru uh, versus uh, 10, 15 versus 15 and Daru's comeback. Uh -uh. It was a lot of that. I think he, it was 7-1 and Daru was the last uh, player on this team and he ran it back and won for his team. And and mind you, this isn't just one and done. This was two out of three matches for every match. So he had to fight several players in two mm -hmm. out of threes. And he won all of them. And if you go back and look at him, he capitalized on every situation that they messed up on, whether they didn't punish the super correctly, whether they uh, didn't punish, like, I guess, a simple move like stroke the Retria correctly, or they dropped a combo, all of that. He just capitalized. And then, like, a lot of, e and it's funny because a lot of Eno players saw that. And we still give him credit because, for one, the first thing we'd said was the mental fortitude. And that was important. We was like, that mental fortitude to stay like that and not crack. In those every single one of those situations, which was close, um, and Justin Wong mentioned this, he was like, all those uh, situations where he won were very close, and to have that mental fortitude in the stack, that like takes a different type of like person. So that we already like character aside, we have to give him credit for that. But then like we also noticed like yeah, a lot of people uh, are scared of you know, and they're not like dealing with her correctly. You know, when you're scared of something. It's like when you fight just when you see people fight Justin Wong for the first time in bracket, and they got he's got the Wong factor already going, and we as veteran players we're like, man, if I was fighting Justin Wong, I'll try to give him the business, right? <laughs> screw the screw the name, but there's some players out there that are like, oh my god, I'm playing against Justin Wong. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm playing against so and so. <laughs> I think a lot of veterans do that, to be honest. But yeah, this is yeah, a, that can it's get a certain type too. It's definitely a certain type of player. It's like you know, like the the guy who's been training on his own hasn't been watching tournaments. That can be like the most dangerous person because they don't know who these people are. Exactly. They're, gonna, they're gonna wake up DP versus anybody. <laughs> they don't care who the name is, and, and sometimes yeah, and, and it's and really it's effective. That's kind of the same scenario with Daru is in. Like if you watch his streams. He dominates pretty. He I don't want to say he dominates, but he makes Eno look like she's like top three mm -hmm. because he capitalizes on every time when somebody messes up in the situation, and he just like will win even if it's a even if it's a bad matchup or whatever. So yeah, just having that mental fortitude was there, and just like it's just it was just crazy to see that happen. But at the same time, letting people just bringing people back down to earth and let people know, look. This character is not that good <laughs> to the point where, like, you could just run through people like that. Not anybody can do that every day. And I'm pretty sure if any one of those players had another chance to fight Daru, they probably would have did much better and looked back on it. But he capitalized on her fears. And he actually, I mean, on her fears, on their fears. And he actually made a tweet about it on uh, getting better. And one of the things he mentioned, he was like, he noticed that people are afraid of Eno. And I, I was like, yep. That's exactly what it is. Before I dropped her, before I like thought about like completely dropping her, mm -hmm. I that's the first initial thought I came to. I was like, wait, a lot of people are afraid of her. Even people who know you, who've been playing Gear to Gear for years, because they're just scared of the mix. So many people care so much about mix and fighting games. So I was like, all right, I'll give it to you. <laughs> you can have it. You can be scared of it. Even if I mess it up, here you go. <laughs> 
Yeah. But there's there's some players that, are, that that won't have it. They they got the knowledge down. But for the most part, a lot of people have a hard time like keeping that mental fortitude when when they're, when they're scared of something. Yeah, that's true. And then like it, it, talking about the players who are new, like generally or from other games, they're not gonna have those biases. <laughs> so like yeah. they'll, they'll go in there and like because Faust has something similar, right? Because like if you let him sit there and throw the items, he's he can be incredibly powerful. But it's like a yeah. forty frame move that he's doing over and over again, and you look at the reality of it, it's like, well, can he really do that? But when you see like a clip of Faust is throwing out the items. And like making people miserable, he's like, "Oh, yo, why are they saying this character's trash? Yo, what, man, what?" And I see, as I see that all the time on Twitter, and I don't really say anything to it because it's like, you know, maybe, maybe he really is good, and I don't see it. Now it's whatever. But, you know what uh, it is? What's up? You know what it is? What What does? I'll say this. <clears throat> what did does Lost Soul, Hook Gang, God, and Daru have in common? What's that, man? They all been winning with their characters. The second you start winning, people are like, oh, yeah, this character is, is scary, scary or busted or whatever like that. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. well, I, what I think it is, is people are caring too much about winning, <laughs> especially in the honeymoon phase of like, you know, a fighting game. It's like, you, and, and I fought and I felt for this with Strive. I was like, man, I'm the way the way I'm like the way I'm winning and stuff like that. Or when I do get wins or, you know. <laughs> I should yeah. be winning here. It's not working out for me. So it's, it's people care so much about winning that it like clouds, you know, it, it, it tunnel visions their like, you know, judgment on like how to approach things, you know? Yeah. It is, it's, it's, it is also like easy to look at those like Twitter clips and see the domination of those characters or any character and be like, yeah, this is great. Cause you don't really have to look at the whole context of the character, what was happening before the player interactions. So, and it, so it's always a great area, right? Because there, there may be more potential and power to that character than, you know, you're willing to admit and that's for anybody. And, yeah. Or or even no, I guess, because a lot of people when they see those clips of those characters that people have been saying a week and stuff, they don't know much about how those characters operate on the whole, right? And so when they see them performing, well, boy, uh, look, look at this, you know, and 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 it's part of them. They're right, right? Because if the character can get their win condition out, that means there's something to them at least, you know, at at a bare minimum. So you can't like discount it on the whole. But it's just one of those things where you got to look at the whole context. But I don't mind because the game's still pretty young. Uh, people's opinions are still pretty malleable, flexible, and they're going to change a lot, you know, a lot. And that's and that's fair, reasonable, and expected. So what people think right now versus what people think in three months, assuming there's no patch, is going to probably be a bit different. Like if people like, you know, put Soul down in fourth place after they realize that maybe he there's a lot more counters than they think, right? You know, people are like, we should have known that the whole time, but that's not reasonable. You You take the information that you know now, and you compare it to later, it's not going to be the same. So sometimes your opinion is going to change, and that's okay. It doesn't mean you're a hypocrite. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means that you looked at the situation with enough context, new information. You're like, you know, maybe this isn't as bad, or maybe this is better than I think. Because maybe three months from now, I might think Faust is top three, you know, just, just spitballing, right, hypothetically. So this don't don't feel like you gotta like stand your ground in any opinion in this game because it's new, it's changing, people are discovering things, and there's more and more tournaments happening. Yeah, and always remember like context matters, man. Uh, with with a lot of like new new, just a lot of games in general, like you know, it's like you see in a Twitter on a Twitter clip or a Twitch clip, right? And you see the player going ham in like I guess like Apex, they're just going ham, killing all these players, and it's like. You didn't see them win the game, though. <laughs> it's like they just had a good kill streak, and it's like, but you, they didn't win, and then like you know they lost out, and it's just yeah, you just, context matters. So like, there's a lot more than just like the old saying. There's a lot more than just mashing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so like it's just it's just as you understand the characters in game in the game, you'll, you'll realize you know, you know what's happening, what isn't, because I I can't think of any game patch or no patch you know what people think of the, you know what ha what was happening the first month you know happening in the eighth month because yep. yeah it's just it's just got to change you know like the beginning of marvel versus capcom 2 meta is far different than the one we have now so don't, don't <laughs> it's like don't 
I know the games are quote unquote simpler, but still, you know, people learn like small micro interactions. They learn the punish stuff. They learn spacing. Uh, you know, they learn better combos, better OK, or you know, option selects or some system exploit comes into play. You never know oh what it could God, be. That's my favorite when a system expo exploit comes into play. And then <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that. I just want to say this real quick. Chun Li in the beginning, everybody was like, she's powerful. And the game kind of moved on. It was like, nah, Chun Li's not it. And then yeah, TAC Infinite came out, and then people and then people started getting good with her in TAC Infinite, and all hell broke broke loose. And now she's like, she's not top, but she's definitely viable. <laughs> yeah, it's, and that's how it is. So don't get don't get too attached to ideas. Keep getting that information. Keep forming your uh, opinion. That's what I'm doing. And so, you know, like I'm fully expecting that how I look at the game now will be completely different. That's just how it is. Yeah, and don't take it too seriously, like I said, because I haven't been taking strides seriously in the last couple of days, and it's been it's been a blast. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I haven't been playing Eno that much, so it's, it's been, been been a blast just doing different stuff. And even when I do play Eno, I do like weird things with her because it's like I'm not trying to win. I'm just trying to like implement things that I don't see other players doing or I think might be good for her. And like the other day I was playing Ben and he was like, what in the world? Why did you RC, uh, what was it? RC jab, air, uh, air to air jab and don't, didn't convert. And you just went straight for like a note set up. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I get a knockdown into a note instead of like me getting a little damage off the RC. So I was like, I'd rather take the mix up again. So I was like, yes, <laughs> little things like that, man. It's, it's just, uh, just, not keeping your head in that competitive space can like make the best out of it. Yeah, that it, that is a, a concept I've been kind of being dealing with lately. Is like I don't have the competitive drive for most games anymore, so I just play them just to play them. So like, whether my character is good or bad, you know, however I feel about it, I just I just play it just to play. Like I don't get frustrated or mad about any of it. <laughs> I just enjoy yeah, it for what it is. All the tournaments that I've done well at, where I've gotten like out of pools and like a really good major. It's because I didn't really care too much about the game. <laughs> yeah, it's all about uh enjoying the journey and uh and play enjoying the game. That's that's yeah. usually what it is. Nine times out of ten, when you see somebody who's just like a strong player, a champion, they're like they just play. They just play the game. No, no BS, no grandstanding. They just play the game. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's all I have to say. Oh. And I will say the character that I'm that I'm gonna like, if I was to play Strive competitively, it would be uh, Kai. Yeah, yeah, I've been seeing you. Uh, you you talked a lot about him. Like you've just been talking about him in general. So I was actually expecting you to say Millie after you were talking about movement so much. But <laughs> I know you've been talking about like you know you mentioned Zato and you know already. But you I know you've mentioned um, Kai just in passing. Yeah, yeah, and Chip was a high candidate too. But um, there's a problem that I don't like uh, with Chip. Uh, Milia kind of has this problem, but it's not as bad. And um, and it's uh, the risk reward once you take the risk. <laughs> it's so uh, weird in um, Strive. Yeah. Because movement is not um, it Strive having good movement in Strive. I don't want to say is uh, like kind of hard but like it's not a thing to really uh i would say pinpoint or like focus on to the point where like it would help you out uh having a combination of, of like you know good extremely damaged quick right off the bat and that that's really good and just i noticed uh chip kind of had the same problems as Eno, where it's like great mix-ups i could keep putting you in the same situation but if i don't kill you if I don't kill you, strive will happen. And if I'm playing against a Naguriyuki or a Soul or even a, like Azato or something like, because he does pretty good damage. Right. Or most characters like in uh, most mid to like higher level characters in that game do, that, do a lot of damage or even Anji at times mm -hmm. in Faust. But yeah, like if you don't capitalize on like that situation where you can repeatedly uh, get that situation again and again and again and you get that damage then it's it's hard so like i th i think i think kai he's good at being such an all-rounder to the point for where um it, he can 
he can fight any character in the game, in my opinion. I think uh, he might have some hard matchups. Mm-hmm. Bearing because they the damage might come might come e- easier without meter, but other than that, I think he can fight every character in the game. It's just uh, I feel like Strive is new. People who are like as I play I play SKD and I've watched Kizzy and playing SKD, Kai has like really really great mixups, right? And uh, there's a lot of Kai's that have that factor. They have really good mixups. Then there are Kai's that like capitalize on like the quick damage. And it's like, all right, I was all right, I'm starting to see the pieces. And it's like, um, to put them together is, is, is gonna be hard. But I do think he's and he he has pretty good movement too, so and decent normal. So and he doesn't mess up my muscle memory. That's one of the biggest reasons why um <laughs> I'm not gonna really play Eno as much, because the muscle memory to play Strive Eno and Exert and plus R Eno is it's really hard because the 2K, 2D thing is really weird when, when I go for it in plus R. It doesn't work. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's that, and half of it is muscle memory. So, That's what's up, man. Well, man, I, 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 hope, I hope that your, uh, your path with Kai is filled with great fortune. And great fun. Yes, I, I also think he has one cheap factor about him. What's that? I think his, co- his EX color is cheap because of dust. But yeah, I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't got much to say. Uh, I would say like you know you mentioned risk reward, and I think I like Strive overall as a game, and I think that's like the big glaring point. And I keep mentioning Soul, and I think that's like you look at Soul's kit, and I think it's just more like the risk reward in it more than the kit itself to me. Like, there's definitely some things that probably should be looked at, but generally it's the risk reward where, like, if I stop him, I don't get that much. But if he, but if he's right with his stronger options, I die. And, you know, so it's like if they adjust the risk reward across the cast, I think the game will feel a lot more consistent. And like, even if they keep it high damage, just make sure that, you know, even if there's low damage characters, they should still have high low damage, quote unquote, right? They don't nuke you, but they still do a good chunk. And, you know, for a lot of characters, you know, is they need a lot of meter or certain situations to match that kind of thing, or they can't match it at all, even when everything's looking good. And so, like, and then they're playing with not a strong option. So if they look at the risk reward and make it make, I would I won't say make it make make sense because that th- common sense in these things are different from person to person, but make it make it feel more fluid. I guess I can't think of a better word, but that's that's my main thing with the game is the risk reward is skewed really heavily in weird ways where it's like either really bad for some characters or really good for some characters where it's like my reward is massive but whatever i risk i get slapped on the wrist then you have characters on the other end of the spectrum it's like i get a i get i get a i get a you know a little bit of a reward for being right but i i i die if i'm wrong and so like yeah i, I like the analogy that i like to use is uh, so uh, every all the gear c- characters are at a party and um soul walks out with like a nice uh gift bag and some characters uh they have like little things in their bags and then like the lower two characters they don't even walk out with a gift bag (laughs) (laughs) i i I do think that uh every character has like a strong thing about them it's just does that strong thing have value yeah and i think that's that's where the rub is but overall i like the basis of the game and it's still really raw it's still a raw game you like you know it like you know, people are like, you know, it should go in beta longer or whatever, but, like, when you release a fighting game that has a ton of interactions to it, there's only so much you can perceive in it. And so you got to let it cook even when it's released. <laughs> even in the old yep. school days, they did that, right? It's, it's yep. just that it, they came in new releases <laughs> or they the sequels are more closer to the games, but they just changed up this and that. Yep, so... Dice Gates Vision, I still see it. <laughs> I, I see it. I'm in. I'm. I'm in. I'm out there, and he, I'm just want to be on the ball to help. So, yep. For sure, for sure. So I, I'm enjoying myself. Uh, I, I'm playing a game with a lot of people who I don't usually play games with. So that's that's a cool thing too. So. Oh, that's the yeah. I think that's honestly that's that's what's really keeping this game up up flow is like you know, I I hate to say it, but it's the truth. It's like being able to play different people from all around the world. I just had a Japanese Leo this morning coming to the East Coast, and I was playing Kai, and I was 
he screwed he messed me up the first round. And I was like, wait a minute. I have a, actually have a decent guy and he just like got destroyed. And I was like, you don't come up here at East Coast ever again. <laughs> no, but it was <laughs> it was funny. It's cool to be be able to play people from around the world. Yeah, that too. And, and, and what I was uh, more referring to was like people who in different communities that I know, you know, like you know, you yeah. know these type of players, and you don't play that game, but they 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 try and strive and you're able to play them. So that's the kind of thing I meant. But that that is in play too. Oh, you but, didn't play? Did you play DBFZ a lot? In, uh, I played a good amount for the first month, but I only played with a uh, Doggy Sandwich and Black Star. Yeah, and, yeah, DBFZ was like that. It had people from all around playing that game yeah so. definitely but i didn't really yeah. like explore that game in the community overall but yeah, <laughs> i just played with my locals <laughs> pretty much <laughs> is what i'm saying but uh yeah strive strive's interesting is and my local scene now is uh getting into it um and then i they didn't really get that hard into guilty gear outside of one or two people so that's been interesting is kind of like show them stuff and play with them yeah and one last thing I want to say, because this video was kind of interesting, and a lot of people kind of uh, responded, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of mixed about it. But I, the there was a recent Snake Eyes video, and where he mentioned like how he looked at past Guilty Gear games and he felt dumb and he mm -hmm. wished he would have played them. Uh, don't it's okay if like you know like if you missed past fighting past fighting games were like arbitrarily hard for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Like, do, do not feel dumb because you didn't pl play those those games. Because what if you did, you would put in so much work to learn a character, and then somebody else would put in so much work to learn an even powerful character, and you two would clash. And let's just say things will happen, and it will be a lot of crazy stuff that might not be in your favor. <laughs> yeah. So. I think it's also the fact that, um, you know, when you're really good at a particular game or even a series, and you have to step in and acknowledge that you got to be really bad in one, that 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 makes it really disheartening for a lot of people just in general. Even if they like, I think this game's cool, but these people have yeah. been playing it for three years, and I've been, I've been at the top of the world and, you know, tech and... I don't want to. I don't want to sit down and learn Guilty Gear. So like, I think when Strive kind of hit the reset button and they all jumped in, they're like, "Yeah, this is cool." And then they look at the other games, and then they now they have a kind of context to understand. Like, okay, that's pretty cool too. Maybe I should have gave it a shot. And that's. And sometimes that's just not something you can know until later. And it's just yeah, you kind of yeah. accept that fact. That's true. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yep. But man, I got nothing to add. We just <laughs> we said we said we we're gonna do freestyling, but we ended up just talking about strife. <laughs> well, so, well, no, we we also talked about like kind of like the honeymoon phase of things. That was kind of like my point. It's that's like, true. You know, they're gonna be they're gonna you know multi buzz come out, and you're gonna have like you know the lead game and all the other games gonna be coming out. And it's like my point was just to like man, just at the end of the day, try to have fun. Don't take too much seriously, and take everything like with a grain of salt. Face don't take it, you know, black and white face value because at the end of the day, you're just trying to, like, everybody else is, it's like a race, but you don't have to make it a race, right? You could go at your own pace and, you know, sure. figure things out. Yeah. So don't, don't, don't let that race get to you. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Like, we, we, like, I guess what I was getting at is, like, we talked about that in the context of Strive, but like you said, yeah. it can apply to any game because a lot of the same stuff you're going to see when Melty Blood comes out, when KOF 15 comes out. So it's, you're going to see a lot of the same stuff, the other context videos, the people crying about what used to be this and that and stuff like that. And so just, 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 just stay your course, enjoy the game at your own pace and give it a shot. You know, you're going to lose either way. So just have fun with it. Yeah. Yep. And that's it. Everybody right. take care. I'm happy everybody was able to, uh, who are people still rocking with us <laughs> and new people rocking with us. Thank you. You guys Man. take care. They ain't had an episode in forever. I'm done. Well, here you, here you go. <laughs> we appreciate Came you sticking out of nowhere around. With a yeah, 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 for sure. But like Casey said, if you're still messing with us, still rocking with us, much uh, thanks. And uh, we'll go ahead and end it here. So peace. Peace.